Jeff is the manager of GIS and IT at the Ganaraska Region Conservation Authority. Prior to that, he was an entrepreneur in, private, in a private GIS company. Jeff has over 24 years experience as a GIS problem solver and leads a team that has done some amazing work with digital elevation models. As an alumni of the Fleming post-grad GIS environmental certificate program, Jeff and his team have helped Sustainable Coburg mentor both senior secondary and post-secondary students on GIS and open data projects. Jeff, over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Jonathan, for the introduction. Uh, I wanted to point out that I'm the, the GIS guy sandwiched between two engineers in this set. So that's a pretty familiar place for us GIS folks, <laughs> kind of how we do it. Um, I'm the GIS IT coordinator at the Ganaraska Region Conservation Authority. Uh, I'm going to be talking today about how we use our ESRI dashboards in our automated workflows. And it's mostly focused around uh, data collection for the for the work that goes into floodplain mapping. Um, so what's a dashboard? The biggest the biggest takeaway for a dashboard from a GIS perspective uh, is trying to get that information in front of the decision makers in a way that they can understand it. We spent years going through collecting data, storing data, building the greatest database ever. Everybody's looked at it and then, or everybody's, the GIS guys have all talked about it, but nobody ever sees it. So when you start getting questions like, why are we spending all this money on IT infrastructure? It's like, so we can do these dashboards is the biggest thing. Um, so we're an Esri shop. So all this technology is Esri based um, and dashboards is just a component of the ArcGIS Online or, or Arc Enterprise systems. Um, and it's presenting the information. I have a few examples in the bottom there. It's just presenting geographic information and data together in a quick and easy way to, rec to reference and to see some trends or, or however you want to show it. Um, it's multiple visualizations that work together on a single screen. So one zoom or one filter will affect all the different uh, data panes. Uh, this can consist of maps, lists, charts, tables. Um, you can look at it on a web-based like a web desktop based app or even on your phone in a mobile view. Um, okay, so our GIS setup at the GRCA uh, is, if we look over here on the left-hand side, basic concept, we have an ArcGIS enterprise environment. We use all these different tools, desktops and mobile apps, and we use ArcGIS online as well. So we have the portal set up, we have the, hosting server set up, we have an image server set up, and we have our ArcGIS data store. And the three servers are all accessible through their own ArcGIS web adapter. So we can get to all three of these individually and they all interact. The basic workflow that we use um, to get to our dashboard, the biggest thing is to get this information to people that can use it um, and understand what's happening in our, in our um, work in, in our work environment. So we have our field workers out here with their little tablet. And then we have workforce server one, two, three and field maps as our apps that these field workers would access. And all that data goes directly into our data store through our ArcGIS server system and out to the dashboards. This is almost real time, depending on connectivity, depending on different things, but it's, it's real time as close as we can say right now. Um, Workforce is a work order system with desktop and mobile views. There is a dispatcher view and a worker view. Um, so the dispatcher view is the web-based desktop view. Um, it gives you the ability to create assignments, set priorities, set due dates, set uh, who is, which worker is assigned to that task. So that gives you the, the ability to monitor and see what, what's going on um, with your workers in the field from the office. Um, it also shows tracking and current, current location. So the, each worker will have a different location as they drive around through, in our case, our watersheds and figure out what's going on and take different data points. Um, and then the worker mobile view 
is over here. So you assign one to the you assign a task to the worker and it comes up as a task in their to-do list. Click on that to-do list, open it, open a task, and then you can use your Google Maps or whatever to navigate to that point. You can see your worker on the on the app. It doesn't have to be the same map in the background. We can add more data to the to the worker view if there's other pieces of data they need. But in our case, we generally use the same map for these types of projects. Uh, the Survey123, that app is a mobile app and it's configurable data forms. So it's data entry. In our case, we've created these forms for the data collection of structures that need to go into a floodplain model. Um, so we would have the general data set here, depending on whether it's a dam, bridge, or culvert, we would collect the different pieces, what's the types, all the things that the engineers determine we need to be able to create the different structures in the model. Um, and one thing that's been added to survey one, two, three in the last like, probably 18 months now um, is we can take multiple pictures at that at each survey. So now we have our photos coming right into the right into the survey. Um, although survey one, two, three is not designed to be a spatial data collection system, you do get a single point with each survey where you are. So all these all the different surveys you take have a point. I don't recommend using that as your location um, from a from a detailed survey perspective. It's still going to only use your the phone. GPS, that kind of stuff. So it's not fantastic, but it is good enough to get you a general location. Um, and then our field maps app. This is, I'm using a different example here. We haven't collected a lot of spatial data for the floodplain mapping with our field maps app, but we do use it in our forest for area operations. Um, a lot of different harvesting applications get marked out, things get closed, things get opened different types of trails. So there's a, you can look at your field map. The map that goes into field map can be looked at in a web browser with a web desktop app, or it can be looked at in field map on your phone. So this is where you can get in and you can, you can actually do spatial data editing on your phone. Um, one of the reasons we don't use it in, uh, in the, uh, structures for, for floodplain mapping is because of our accuracy. So the phone accuracy is under two meters usually. Um, and when we use, when we do structures for our flood mapping, we want to get into the under 20 centimeter type accuracy. So we use our RTK GPS for that kind of survey. But if you're doing a trail, it's two meters. The trails are usually two meters wide at least. So you're, you're pretty good. Um, here's some examples. So, um, for our Wilmot and Graham floodplain mapping project, we actually use these. So we we can track in the in the dashboard, which is this, you know, back here. We can actually show all the workers, what workers are working, what workers aren't, how many are assigned, how many tasks have been completed. And this is all coming straight out of our, our workforce app. And as you complete one in your survey one, two, three it shows up as a green dot on here and gets completed. Um, you can also show high priority stuff. You can show in process, pause, cancel. So, and all this is configurable in workforce. Um, I don't, I'm not sure how close I am, Jonathan. So you let me know if I'm running out of time. But um, so all this automatically goes in. You can sit at your desk and watch your workers drive around. And this actually helps to understand the amount of time that work that is needed to uh, to get tasks done and do that and stuff. Um, and this is where we did our that project. So we still have quite a bit to do and we're gonna be implementing tweaks and improvements as we go. So that uh, hopefully it gets better and better, but we've come a long way from writing everything down on a piece of paper, bringing it back to the office, inputting all the data and then creating it. So right now it's just, everything's feeding right into our system and it, just makes everything that much more efficient. Excellent.